everyone, welcome to my cozy little corner. If you're new here, I'm Mia. I make cute art on the internet. And today I'd like to take you on a tour of where all the magic happens. This is my home studio that I share with my partner. We call it the stew. We've actually split the room in half and this is my little magical corner. We've been here for about eight months now. When I moved in here, I was coming from a little tiny studio apartment. It was already overcrowded with art supplies and things. And while of course I really love handmade crafts. My supplies has definitely continued to accumulate over time and keeping all that supplies can really build up a lot of clutter over time. So over the last few months of being here I've been trying to explore ways to store things and display things beautifully. And right now I'm at a pretty good spot. There's still more that I can do as far as organizing but I think I have a little bit of that clutter under control now at least. And as a self-proclaimed maximalist I would love to share some tips on how to keep your art supplies tucked and tidy. Without further ado, let's jump into the space. So this is my desk, which I know is definitely like the star of my space. I absolutely love this desk. I got this desk actually because I wanted the Ikea Mike desk. It's like a corner desk that's typically used as a vanity but i just couldn't justify spending like 300 dollars on it like that was kind of crazy to me especially for how small it actually is so i ended up getting this instead as a dupe and it ended up being like half the price of it and it ended up being bigger than the original desk so i think it was money well spent i love how it uses vertical space one of the things that attracted me about the minke desk was the hutch and this also has like a really incredible hutch when you're in small spaces it's like really important to maximize like vertical space and I felt like a hutch really worked well especially for all the little trinkets that I have. I love how they're displayed now. I think it's just you know really cute and precious and they're not just like haphazardly like hanging out on my desk anymore. It's just nice for them to have like a home. Okay, so to kind of get into like what's actually on my desk, I have this cord box here that hides this huge USB extender that I have. Being a small business owner, there are a lot of tools that I use to run my business, like my printer and my cutting machine and my mic, my label printer. And there are only so many ports on the back of an iMac. So I ended up having to get like a USB extender, but that paired with all of the plugs that were going into it, it just became like a spaghetti mess on my desk and I just hate sitting amongst like tons of cords. It's just the worst feeling. It feels like you're sitting in like a plate of spaghetti. So <laughs> I bought this cord box and I yeah I, it's a good way to hide that spaghetti mess. Of course like I haven't quite gotten all of my cable management down just yet but this has been like a great start to hiding some of the cords that were on my desk. I already don't have like a ton of actual desk space. This desk is not small but it's small because of my iMac. My iMac is ginormous <laughs> so it really does eat up a lot of desk space and I need to be pretty mindful about what actually goes on top of my desk. This is my thermal label printer that I use for shipping in my business. It's been super reliable plus it matches like the aesthetic of my desk and just general work area so I love it even more for that. This desk mat is from Society6. I can't remember the name of the artist right now but I will pop them up on the screen if you'd like to get your own. I really love this pattern and I have considered like rebuying it just because this mat has gotten a little bit of wear and tear over the last few years of me having it but this keyboard is also another Amazon purchase. I really love this keyboard. I think it looks really good aesthetically. Maybe someone out there will relate but when I initially got this keyboard I had gotten like a full set done on my nails and it was really difficult for me to type on it so I didn't even get to use it for like the first month of me having it. So now I like don't do my nails nearly as much. One because of the keyboard but also because it feels weird when you're crocheting too. And then this is my mic. I'm not currently using this right now to record the audio for this video. I actually tend to just use this for voiceovers. My mic is like attached to my desk via this little mic arm. There's a little clamp here. But I also interchange this mic with my canvas ring light 
which I'll show you guys. If I'm sketching on my desk, I can use this to record top-down shots with. It kind of attaches in a similar way. I can put my phone here or I could my actual camera like through here, which is just my jerry rig. But yeah, I occasionally will use this for top-down shots. The only thing about this though is that there is a little bit of shakiness to the shot from time to time, so I have to be very careful about my movements, but yeah. This is another tool in my video toolkit. All right, wrapping up my desk slightly, there are some LED light, oh, you can't even see it. There are some like LED lights that are strung here that actually came with the desk. You'll probably best see these at night, but oh no, they show up on camera. Occasionally I would like turn these on in the evening time for like a little vibe, especially if I don't feel like getting up and like turning the actual lamp on in this room. This is like a cute little feature. I love that it came with my desk. Like it wasn't like an additional thing that I bought, but I also have like another set of lights above that I got from Five Below that are like these tulip lights. And I think those give like such a nice little like warm glow at night. And of course I love tulips. Tulips are like my favorite flower. So they add like just another cute little extra layer to all that's going on up there. On the side of my desk, I have like a lot of my paper media for my business. like my laminate paper, my sticker paper, and the cutting mats that I use as well. I just like having them like easily in reach, so. And then one super last thing about my desk. This is my camera clamp that I use to get top-down shots at my desk with. It's really great for if you're drawing on your iPad or you're sketching in your sketchbook. Super inexpensive and a great alternative to a tripod as well, so I'll link it down below if you're interested. So this is my yarn wall slash other miscellaneous supplies. I was in my fiber art era last year doing lots of like crochet and amigurumi. And of course, as every crocheter knows, like there's a need to gather every color for all the different projects that you can do. And I'm no stranger to the frequent Joann's or Michael's trip. I ended up accumulating a bunch of yarn over time, which I was storing in like grocery bags and stuff which really wasn't like the most, you know, functional way of like storing yarn. Even though I'm a big fan of like closed storage solutions, especially when you don't have a lot of space, I didn't feel like that was really working for yarn. So I was looking at different ways of storing yarn and I came across like the yarn wall. I saw people online storing their yarn on the wall and I thought, what a great idea. It's like colorful, so it kind of functions as wall art. And so then it becomes like a storage solution, but also decorative. I found this pegboard on Facebook Marketplace for like $20 and wow, what a steal that was. Like this is huge for only $20. And yeah, the rest is history. I bought some hooks and I bought a yarn winder because, you know, yarn comes in skeins, but to hang them, I needed to make them into yarn cakes, wound up my yarn, threw up some hooks, and yeah, we've got the yarn wall. But if you'll notice, I thought that the yarn was like very overwhelming stored in those bags. I thought I had so much more than I actually have. And of course that might have been different if I had gotten like a smaller pegboard, but as you can see this doesn't even take up like half of the pegboard so it's really just like a yarn corner. I found other ways to like store other various art supplies. One of which being my sticker storage for my shop Pretty Magical. This is just a big plastic bin with little drawers and I store my stickers and my keychains in here. It's not the prettiest thing. I'm not in love with the color at like at all but I think it's really useful. I found myself like quickly outgrowing like the smaller plastic storage containers because of my stock. 
but this I almost have like too many drawers so it's like a great thing for me to grow into in the future and at some point in the future I probably will paint it to kind of match the vibe of this room a little bit more. Up here we have my embroidery supplies and also like I threw some copy paper up there because I needed somewhere to put the copy paper. Yeah I have my stabilizer stored up here, my hoops and other various like instruction manuals from both my embroidery and my sewing machine and yeah it made sense to store it right there because this is also my embroidery slash sewing table here. This collapses into a cabinet which I really haven't had to like do besides to move it into this space but if I ever wanted like more space in the studio to just you know lounge or invite like a guest over I could always like turn this into a cabinet to free up more floor space but yeah this is where like sewing and embroidery happens occasionally I'm still learning how to do it so for right now it's like kind of more of a once in a blue moon thing but I actually use it a little bit more to film things like packing orders or top down shots because it's a really nice like flat white surface and I'm trying to make like a concerted effort to keep it clean because it's very easy for tables to become like catch-alls for all kinds of clutter so I've been trying to like make an effort to be intentional about the things that I place here even like things on here now I probably could find homes for but it's a lot clearer than it typically has been in the past so I'm happy with it. Quickly jumping back to my pegboard, these wire baskets are my quick grab supplies. If I'm using a material pretty frequently I like to store it here just so I don't have to like go rummaging through my like storage closet for it. Right now I have acrylic paint, some paint brushes, my punch needle tool and some acrylic paint markers here. And finally, these bins became a little bit obsolete recently. I used to store kind of like small little things inside of them, like earring findings or like the backings for like safety eyes, but I've since found a different home for them. And of course, there's never like enough decluttering in the world that she can do, so I'm sure like some other material will find its way in these bins and stored in the next couple weeks but for right now they're empty. I've just got some twine in here, a little bit of thread, and a clay cutter. Lastly, this is my slow growing collection of enamel pins. I'd love to add more in the future. And this is a framed article that I did with Canvas Rebel all about my career path and my thoughts on working in animation and my hopes and dreams. Like just a great little deep dive on all things Nia artistically and professionally. If you'd like to read it, I'll link it down below. But yeah, this is this one corner of my studio. And this is what I call my production shelf. This is where a lot of the essential tools of my business live, like my printer and my silhouette cutting machine. A really significant addition to this shelf has been my 3D printer that I got like at the very start of this year. This is the Tina 2, this is the basic, and I really specifically sought out a kid's 3D printer just so I could kind of ease my way into 3D printing. I figured if it's easy enough for a kid to do, then probably easy enough for me to do. And while that is true with like pre-made models, I've been trying to figure out how to do my own and how to get them to print correctly. I've had some successful attempts, but then I've also had a lot of failures too. So that's something I want to really jump back into now that I have a lot more free time, but the learning curve is steep for that. This shelf was also an Ikea dupe. And before you guys assume that I hate Ikea, it's really just that I am notoriously bad at putting together furniture like really really bad and also sometimes the things that I prefer from there are a little bit out of my budget this shelf is actually two stackable bookshelves that came pre-assembled so I really just needed to open them up like folding tables but yeah I found these on Amazon and I thought well I can totally handle stacking two bookshelves getting into some of the details of my shelf I've repurposed these dish holders into places for my monthly paper Patreon prints, as well as my shipping supplies for my business. It holds envelopes and labels and also photo paper. In this green container, I have even more shipping supplies like my bubble mailers, my stamps, some glassine bags. But 
it's not nearly as organized and aesthetically pleasing as the rest of my shelf so I'm not gonna pull it out to show you guys it's more of a contained chaos right now but that is what lives in this green container like I mentioned before I have my Epson eco tank here and my silhouette cameo below I've got my label holders and then just really like little bits of decoration sprinkled in here and there which decoratively speaking my latest addition is this volume 8 of Demon Slayer it has Rengoku featured on the cover here and it's still wrapped in the plastic that it came in and it's probably gonna stay that way because my friend brought this back for me from Japan so it's in Japanese I can't actually read it so for now it'll just be a nice little decorative piece on my bookshelf and that's the stew hope you guys enjoyed this tour of my art studio and thank you for watching if you liked this video please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this if you'd like to support me in making more content like this i do have a patreon that i will link down below full of exclusive perks and discounts and yeah i think that about wraps things up i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys